I'm the founder and owner of LES Clothing Co. And I also operate a business management and brand consultation company uh, called Worldwide Brand Solutions and RGL Consulting Group. We work with a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners and, you know, forming companies and, you know, protecting their business assets in the form of trademarks and copyrights and things along those natures. What's good, people? The name is Rob G, a.k.a. Trademark Rob, from the Lower East Side, New York City. We've been doing the LES, you know what I'm saying, on and off since at least 99, but we've been doing it consistently, you know, at least since like 2008. Yeah, it's been, it's been a long grind. Consistency is key. For the trademarking thing, I've been at that, you know, 20, 20 plus years at this point, probably going on 21 years, uh, you know, uh, at the end of this year. I started that like in uh, 2000. Yeah, I started, you know, started working on a little firm, you know, in New York City, you know, downtown, dealing with, you know, business matters. And I've just been, you know, building, you know, from there. And that's what kind of like led me into the whole, you know, hustle of what I do in regards to the trademarks and, and business formation. COVID-19 hasn't really, you know, affected my, my, my brand consulting and business management, you know, hustle, you know, that significantly. I mean, obviously, during the beginning of, uh, you know, the, the quarantine, like starting in March, we had to close down the shop. So uh, th this location that we at right now, 40 Clinton Street, uh, we were here. I had just got back into this spot, I want to say maybe like six months prior to quarantine. So, you know, I was pretty much in the process of rebuilding it, reestablishing my presence, you know, in the hood, at least, you know, with the store and then quarantine hit. So, you know, obviously that that went to the wayside, you know, what I'm saying and we had to put that on pause for a minute. Uh, we're still maybe generating, you know, some sales online, nothing significant, but um, I, I've, I've always been active, you know what I'm saying, still promoting, you know, the brand, always, you know, always keeping it alive. And then, like I said, in regards to my, you know, my brand consulting and uh, business management hustle that deals with the trademarks and the copyrights and assisting business owners with, uh, you know, protecting and enforcing their business assets, we stay active with that. Quarantine ain't really, you know what I'm saying, affect that in any type of way. Other than maybe the courts being closed, you know what I'm saying, or, you know, if we got to make a court appearance down to that federal court building, you know, the, the fucking security is a little, you know, more stringent and, and, and you know, crazy. But otherwise, you know, we, we still good. We still active. The pandemic hasn't really had us readjusting in, in, in any type of way other than, you know, incorporating some some safety precautions when we out and about, maybe, you know, in the field, meeting with clients or executing on, on, on business situations. But I, I can't really pinpoint, you know, any 
you know, anything else that has been detrimental to us, you know, still moving forward or progressing in, in the business. I'm Lower East Side, born and raised. So I started LES back in the days, you know what I'm saying, as a, as a way and a form, you know, for me and my peoples from the hood to, you know, represent where we come from, you know, and show recognition, you know, to the hood that, you know, that raised us. So, you know, I started doing that, you know what I'm saying? I was consistent with it. You know, I always kind of like had a, a couple of hustles or grinds going at the same time. Uh, so just kept building on it. And then when I started, you know, branching off or expanding or I entered into the legal world, you know what I'm saying, back in, you know, for the most part, 99 as well, it just gave me an advantage because, you know, it put me in a position where, uh, you know, I was not only building on something, but I was building on it in a way where I was able to protect it and acquire ownership at an early stage, which has, you know, been beneficial to me and is still, you know what I mean, working to my advantage and benefit to this day. For the most part, you know, I, I was I was doing time back, you know, back in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Caught a little drug sale, uh, you know, did a little bullshit bid. And, you know, while I was bidding, I, you know, used my time wisely. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was only down, like, you know, 26 months in total. No, you know, nothing serious. But, you know, during that little 26-month period, like I said, I utilized my time wisely. I was in the law library. I was, you know what I'm saying? They actually charged me with a case while I was down. And that kind of like, you know, put my back against the wall to, to get a little deeper into the law. So, you know, I was dealing with that situation. And, you know, I took, uh, you know, I, I pretty much had a, a gift and a talent in the legal field that being incarcerated, Brought, brought out of me, you know what I mean? A talent and a skill I didn't even know that I possessed. And, uh, you know, I started, you know, I was fighting my case. I was dealing with the legal situation. I ended up, you know, beating that case I was fighting even while I was down for the drug sale. And when I came home, uh, the lawyers that had represented me on that last case, they ended up hiring me, you know? So I worked with them in the firm for a couple months and, you know, I was like trying to figure out, you know, what I was going to do from there or how I was going to progress and what I was doing. And then it, it kind of like, you know, early on in the game of me being into that, you know, into that industry and that field, I learned that there wasn't really much potential for growth for, you know, working in the legal field as a paralegal as I was back then, you know, in the, in the criminal world, you know? So then that's what made me branch out and start working in the business world, dealing with trademarks and copyrights and, you know, all of those type of issues. And I just built it from there. I always had, you know what I'm saying, uh, the, the hustle and entrepreneurial skills and spirit in me. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, working in the legal field, working with the business, it, it definitely gave me, you know, an advantage that is still, you know, working for me today. I'm definitely inspired, you know what I'm saying, by successful business entrepreneurs that come from an urban setting or background of some, you know, extent. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by, you know what I'm saying? Like any intelligent businessman, what, you know, even if you don't come from, you know, a urban background, but particularly people that I know that come from a similar background as myself, or that have, you know what I'm saying, really had to, you know, endure some struggle in life and nothing was handed to them on a silver plate. You know, I have a little more, you know, respect, you know what I'm saying, or admiration for them. But, you know, I, I do, I am inspired by other, you know, like I said, just successful business owners and entrepreneurs in, in different fields, fashion, entertainment, you know, etc. I come up with the majority of designs for my clothing company since day one by myself the, uh, you know a lot of the concepts and ideas are you know independently thought of 
uh, you know, by myself. Uh, there has been, you know, an occasional designer or two that I've worked with over the years that may have, you know, come and presented to me something that, you know, they came up with independently and that we may have used. But for the most part, um, you know, I come up with the the creative concept and ideas of, you know, most of the designs that we have released to date. With the vinyl stickers, um, I mean, I think vinyl stickers go, you know, hand in hand with a lot of, you know what I'm saying, um, apparel, you know what I'm saying, um, companies and the course that I'm promoting. Um, and I just like vinyl stickers, you know what I mean? I like, you know, I like, I, I'm not gonna say I was a, a, a graffiti artist back in the day, that would be inaccurate. You know, I had my little tag and all of that. But just even since I've been, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm market you know what i mean that's all a part of you know marketing and advertising you know what i'm saying so you know i even be uh you know not not now we haven't been active with it but when we had the store across the street there 43 clinton you know we was out here bombing up all the light poles with stickers and posters and you know what i mean like street you know street team sh type shit that you see you know how they how they promote you know a new artist product you know in, in the music industry or you know that, that kind of like is common too even for clothing brands a lot of clothing brands brands, you know what I mean, or at least urban, you know, brands have incorporated that street team, you know what I'm saying, marketing and promotion. You know, the, the brand that I've decided to develop and build on and even seek, you know what I'm saying, protection in the form of trademarks and copyrights happens to be uh, a property, you know what I'm saying, or a brand that people frequently use. Uh, so, you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, I've been fighting, you know what I'm saying, for, for my brand and I've been fighting, you know what I'm saying, to maintain some exclusivity and connection with my brand for many years. I mean, just off the top of my head, I, I think like, it, you know, my enforcement efforts for people violating my brand have started as early as like 2007. This specific design right here, this, this Lower East Side, you know, slant design, New Era put this out in 2007. And I sent New Era a cease and desist letter for this. So this, this design right here, like, honestly, this isn't an, even an original design. New Era put it out. I went at them legally. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I prevailed. You know what I'm saying? They, they packed their bags up. You know what I mean? Grand opening, grand closing status. And I said, you know what? Thank you. I'm going to take that design for me, too. You know what I mean? Since y'all niggas put it out, I'm a, you know what I mean? And, and I went at y'all legally and y'all folded it. Thank you. You know what I mean? And I jacked them for that. And you know what I'm saying? I'm still using it to this day now. But yeah, that, that was one of the first things. Um, that was like one of my first legal pursuits. You know what I'm saying? Like when I first started enforcing my brand. So I went at New Era with the cease and desist letter. We did a little back and forth. I was, you know, uh, at the time of that, I was working at the trademark and copyright law firm. So they was at a significant disadvantage. So yeah, they, they, they ultimately folded. I jacked them on the design, you know what I mean? S said, all right, thank you for putting it out. Now I'm gonna add that to my collection. And um, that's what I did. And then, so this was in 2007. Then in 2009, New Era tried to get cute and they put out a cap saying the lower. You know what I'm saying? Which is also a reference to Lower East Side. You know what I'm saying? L-E-S, the Lower. You know what I'm saying? That's what we call, you know what I mean? That's, that's one of the nicknames of our hood that we've been, you know, utilizing forever, the Lower. So I was intelligent enough to also trademark the Lower. I trademarked Lower East Side, L-E-S-M-Y-C, the Lower, Alphabet City, you know what I mean? And, a, you, know, a bunch, you know, a bunch of other little things that, you know, 537, things that were representative of Lower East Side, but were directly, you know, Lower East Side, but, you know, that, that we at least utilized, you know what I'm saying, as a form of representation. Um, so, yeah, long story short, New Era came back in 2009, and they put out a cap, the lower, I banged on them immediately, you know what I'm saying? Shut them down, you know? And then, you know, I was just on my cease and desist letter. Any, 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 uh, any company I became aware of that was using Lower East Side in any way, shape, form, or fashion, I was sending them the cease and desist letter.
shit started coming full circle again. A lot of companies started using it, like starting in 2010. So I said, you know what? Fuck this cease and desist letter shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I need to come a little stronger. So then that's when I started suing these big companies in federal court. So I started my first case as a pro se plaintiff in federal court in 2010 against Payless. Payless was, you know what I'm saying, you know, using Lower East Side for shoes and footwear, and then they were trying to expand and, you know, go into accessories and, you know, even clothing. So I had to get at them, you know. Once I got at, you know, Payless and I was successful in that, that's when I just, you know, let loose and I started going at everybody. I think, like, from... You know, the first couple years that I started going at, you know what I'm saying, all these big, you know, multi-million and billion dollar, you know, clothing entities, um, I like went at like Payless, you know, I sued Aeropostu, I sued J. Crew, I sued Macy's, you know, a couple brands like that. But then, you know, a couple years, then, then I was on pause with it because everybody was chilling. They wasn't violating. Then I came back, I want to say maybe like in, in 14 or 15. And I started, you know, going at a bunch of companies again, uh, Metro and Ness, uh, Urban Outfitters, uh, you know, a, a long list of others. And then I paused on it again because, you know, there was a little compliance and it wasn't, you know, like widespread use of my brand. So I was like, all right, cool. My enforcement efforts, you know, proved successful. You know, people are chilling. But then every couple of years, it's like a, a new, you know, emergence of new companies or, or, or businesses thinking that they could use my brand. So it's like it's never ending. You know what I'm saying? So right now at this point, you know, we in 2020. And um, I just started a new case like two weeks ago against, you know, Fashion Nova. I'm, I'm, I'm the first person to ever sue Fashion Nova, you know what I'm saying, for any, you know, infringement related, you know, claims in, in federal court. You know what I'm saying? So I just banged on Fashion Nova and Zara and Super Dry and a couple other dummies just literally like two weeks ago. But even over the last couple years from like 16, like I went at Puma. I went at, you know what I'm saying, Adidas. I went at a, a, a bunch of, you know, big companies. But then I, you know, with, with the widespread use of, you know, brands and clothing, you know, being uh, promoted and advertised and sold online via the, you know, the internet, I had to start getting aggressive on the hosting companies and, you know, even like Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, or, you know, the, the, the companies that provide a, a, a selling platform for people. So like, you know, Shopify, there's you got like Shopify or Big Cartel, you know? So when the little brand owners, you know what I'm saying? So like, say somebody from the hood, you know, violates my brand and they're a little, you know, they're a little dude, you know what I'm saying? That it's not worth me taking legal action against them because, you know what I mean? It's really like a waste of my time. Um, if they're violated my brand or they utilizing it in any official capacity in a store online anything i don't even have to get at them you know even if it's a waste of time because i'm gonna go directly at instagram i'm gonna go at shopify i'm gonna go at big cartel you know what i'm saying so i'm still effective you know what i'm saying like effective in and getting the objective across which is getting niggas to stop you know what i mean using my brand you know what i'm saying in any official capacity so at, at this point I've started about 45 cases in federal court, but even though it was only 45 cases, I've sued over 160 companies because now I'm doing cases where I'm, I'm naming like, you know, 10, 10, 15, 20 fucking companies, you know what I'm saying, in one action. So like early on, when I started doing the lawsuits in, 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 in 2010, I would just sue one person. So it would be like, you know, Gap and Old Navy, but they're a commonly owned entity. But it would just be like, you know, them two, you know what I'm saying? And then it would be J. Crew, you know what I mean? Then it would be Urban Outfitters. Now I'm like, fuck that. Urban Outfitters, Zoomies, you know what I mean? Zara, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, it, it'll take me forever to enforce my brand if I got to do one at a time. You know what I'm saying? So. It's my hustle, legal hustle, real life, real, I call it real life monopoly. 
You know what I'm saying? They land on my property and I get at them. And you know what I'm saying? You either going to fight it, you know what I mean? And you're going to pay a law firm or you're going to fucking pay me. You know what I'm saying? Choice is yours. It makes me no difference. Rob G, trademark Rob, LES Clothing Co. Boss. You know, the, uh, the IG is uh, LES Clothing Co. You know what I'm saying? Anything, you know, related to the clothing brand. And in regards to the, uh, you know, to the legal, you know what I'm saying? To the legal issue and the legal matters and, the, you know, the business management and the brand consultation. Um, our page is at RGL Consulting Group, you know, RGL, those are my initials, so that's pretty much, you know, the significance of that, but yeah.